They mocked it publicly in Tel Aviv. Its length does not exceed one meter. Its weight is closer to a backpack than to an offensive weapon. A flying scrap box, not even worth the cost of interception. That's how Hebrew reports described it. But inside the operations rooms, the questions no one dared to ask began to surface. How do you stop a weapon that doesn't appear on radar? makes no sound and carries too little metal to trigger interception systems. Many secrets and details will be revealed in this episode about Iran's newest nightmare weapon, Hadid 110. Stay with us until the end. The official name is Hadid 110. But within the Revolutionary Guard system, it's known by a more mysterious name, Dalahu, a small-sized, jet-powered suicide attack drone belonging to the class of loitering munitions designed for high-speed precision strikes. At first glance, Hadid 110 presents itself as a different kind of offensive object compared to other loitering munitions in Iran's arsenal. Its design clearly shows that this isn't just a small suicide drone, but a carefully engineered project intended to bypass radars and approach targets without warning. It relies on a cropped delta wing that gives it maneuverability at low altitudes and effectively reduces its side radar signature. Its single vertical stabilizer is swept backward at a sharp angle, replacing the traditional twin fin concept, a clear attempt to reduce rear radar reflection and stabilize the airframe without sacrificing agility or balance. The fuselage is flat, integrated and free of protrusions, with dimensions not exceeding one meter in length or wingspan. This small size makes it one of the smallest attack drones showcased so far in Iranian exhibitions, giving it a significant advantage when dealing with ground-based surveillance systems. As for the materials used in construction, there is no official data confirming them. But considering the nature of its mission and the context of its development, the drone is likely made of a composite of fiberglass and compressed carbon with layers of radar absorbent coating ram paint, a technique Iran has increasingly adopted in its modern projects, especially those intended to operate in radar saturated environments. The total weight of Hadid 110 is estimated between 25 and 40 kilograms at most, placing it within the light aerial munitions category, a class that grants it flexibility in transport, launch and deployment, without overburdening launch platforms or exposing its location early. The warhead ranges between 5 and 15 kilograms of high explosive material and is likely of the HE frag type, fragmentation enhanced for maximum damage within a specific radius. It may also feature a thermal warhead designed to strike exposed antennas and radar systems with high precision. Some Western sources suggest that the maximum variant may carry a 30 kilogram warhead, but it is clear that this would come at the expense of fuel capacity or operational range, making that version unsuitable for long range missions. As for propulsion and flight performance, this is where Hadid 110 clearly outperforms its peers. It uses a small micro-turbojet engine, a major difference from the Shahed 136 drone, which relies on a traditional piston engine with a rear propeller. 
This difference alone makes Hadid 110 faster, quieter and harder to track or intercept. In terms of speed, Press TV describes it as flying at several hundred kilometers per hour, but more precise estimates place it in the high subsonic range between 400 and 520 kilometers per hour. This grants it faster response times and significantly better terminal maneuvering capabilities than typical loitering munitions. As for altitude, although no official data is available, its design indicates that its missions are most likely executed at very low altitudes, between 20 and 100 meters, to avoid radar detection. Assuming a steady flight speed of 500 kilometers per hour, the drone can cover 100 kilometers in approximately 12 minutes from the moment of launch, giving it ample time to reach tactical targets behind enemy lines and carry out its strike before being detected or intercepted. The operational range of Hadid 110 is classified among short to medium range platforms, according to official Iranian sources. While some estimates, such as Wikipedia, attribute a range of up to 350 kilometers, this number appears more theoretical than practical, especially considering the small fuselage and limited fuel capacity. Therefore, the most realistic estimate suggests a range of 60 to 120 kilometers in its standard tactical version, with the possibility of exceeding 200 kilometers in versions with reduced payload and expanded fuel tanks. When compared to the Shahed 136, which has a range of over 1,000 kilometers, the entirely different role of this new platform becomes clear. Hadid 110 was not designed for deep strategic strikes, but for precise missions within the operational depth, used as a surgical tool to hit a specific point, quickly, cost-effectively, and with significant operational impact. As for navigation and guidance systems, this is the critical component. The drone's ability to accurately hit a target, especially when flying at low altitude in a jammed environment, depends entirely on its internal electronics. Hadid 110 relies on navigation systems very similar to those used in the Shahed 136, but with improved response time and speed. Its guidance system likely consists of three layers. One, inertial navigation system, INS, relies on accelerometers and gyroscopes to calculate its path independently from external signals maintaining flight continuity even under jamming. Two, global navigation satellite system, GNSS, likely a hybrid of GPS, US, Beidou, China, and possibly GLONASS, Russia, depending on the version used, offering redundancy in global positioning. In case of satellite jamming, the drone reverts entirely to INS-3. Optical or electro-optical terminal guidance, likely. In the final moments before impact, it likely uses a small imaging sensor or low-resolution thermal seeker to make real-time corrections toward the target. It's also possible that visual target recognition algorithms are integrated, especially since Iran has already begun testing such technology in other land and sea-based loitering munitions. The launch platform and radar signature that worry Israel Hadid 110 is launched from a foldable three-legged platform, a lightweight and simple setup that can be deployed in minutes. The drone is mounted on an inclined metal ramp and uses a small solid booster to gain the necessary speed for takeoff before the turbojet engine takes over propulsion. What sets this system apart is its extreme simplicity. The drone is stored in flat wooden crates, easily transportable by small trucks or even pickup vehicles, 
offering great tactical flexibility for mobile deployment and concealment. In terms of radar signature and stealth, every design feature in Hadid 110 points to a single goal, to be as invisible as possible. Its small size, flat shape, sloped edges and single stabilizer all contribute to an extremely low radar cross-section RCS, making detection on traditional radars very difficult, especially when flying low and at high speed. In this scenario, Hadid 110 becomes a real nightmare for short-range air defense systems like Iron Dome, as it enters the so-called silent zone that radar can only cover at the very last moment. And when factoring in its higher speed than Shahed 136, its lower acoustic signature, typical of microjet engines, and the difficulty of interception during its terminal phase, dealing with it becomes more of an operational dilemma than a standard air defense task. But Hadid drone is not designed to destroy cities or major strategic facilities. Rather, it is tailored for precise, silent missions targeting critical weak spots in enemy infrastructure. It is ideal for taking out battlefield radar systems or paralyzing mobile command posts. It can be used independently or in swarm attacks alongside larger drones like Shahed 136, with Hadi drone leading the way to open radar gaps and confuse detection systems before the heavier drones follow to complete the strike. And you, dear viewer, in your opinion, if Hadid drone were launched from Lebanon or from offshore naval platforms, does Israel's Iron Dome have what it takes to stop it? Let us know in the comments.